Welcome to another video by Limitless Potential Technologies. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers. I think we're at like 23 of you now, so big following, but uh, hoping to put out lots more videos for you guys and hopefully you can tell your friends and I'll get some more subscribers because it is motivating to see people watching these videos and I don't have very many, uh, though I do have a lot of ideas for future videos that I think you're gonna really appreciate. So today we're gonna talk about colloidal colloidal solutions, which are um, particles infused or suspended within uh, water or other solutions. But for what we're going to be talking about, colloidal copper and colloidal silver. Colloidal silver is silver particles suspended in water. So these are two pieces of silver. They're spaced equal distance apart for the most uh, for all intents and purposes. And when you put a positive charge and a negative charge and pass electricity across the two plates in solution, uh, some of the silver is dislodged from the positive plate, the anode, and it travels over to the cathode. And some of it's deposited on, onto the cathode, the negative plate, but not all of it. Some of it stays in solution in the water. So that's how you make colloidal, colloidal metal solutions. And that's also the principle of electrolysis. Um, electrolysis is when you use electricity to make a non-spontaneous reaction happen. So something that wouldn't ordinarily take place when you pass electricity across it, it does. And there's many processes that use this, including um, galvanic plating of different metals. So if you want to say chrome, chrome plate, or uh, copper plate something, that's how they do it again, is through electrolysis or passing a current across uh, a solution and having the metal deposited upon the cathode. Uh, this is also how they produce hydrogen and oxygen in industrial levels, is through electrolysis, because hydrogen comes off the negative plate and oxygen comes off the positive plate. So today we're gonna be taking these two copper plates and we're going to be passing electricity across them and it's going to deposit copper particles into the water. It's also going to make a little bit of hydrogen and oxygen and that's going to um, require good ventilation. You shouldn't do this even though it's minimal because the currents we're using are small so there's not going to be a lot of gas but nevertheless better safe than sorry especially when you're playing with hydrogen and oxygen. They're very explosive concussive gases especially when ignited only when ignited, but either way, better safe than sorry. So we have quad purity copper, 0.99.99% copper. These are some thicker plates that I'm gonna use in the future. And we have a glass two liter jar or a beaker. And we've got distilled water over here. And then we've got our machine, which produces the correct amount of electricity in the correct waveform. So this machine here, you can see these are just, uh, they are DC power supplies. So very cheap, cheap and inexpensive. And inside here, I've got them hooked up to, these are polarity flopping. I'm using them as polarity flopping devices, uh, basically, you want this power supply, which is feeding into these, to go through these polarity flopping devices. And that allows the negative and the positive, negative and the positive be switched about every 10 seconds. So that prevents buildup of, uh, or electroplating of one of the, uh, it would be the negative, the cathode, buildup of metal on the cathode by switching them. So you're switching cathode and anode every 10 seconds and I'm going to show you what that looks like here. Then we also have air stones because you want to bubble the solution as you make it. So we're going to place an air stone in here on either side. This is a little bit too small of a container. I'm going to go up to a larger uh, four, four liter container here, but I just want to show you guys in the clear beaker because it's a lot easier to demonstrate what's going on. So now we're gonna pour our distilled water. You don't have to use distilled, but it is better. And at the very least, you wanna use uh, reverse osmosis water so it's pure and you don't have any 
excess salts or minerals in there. And we're not gonna fill this up above the top of the plates. It wouldn't be possible because the plates are taller than the beaker, but you don't want to anyways because the electricity coming down here, once we connect our positive and negative, so we'll say the red's positive and the black is negative. If this was submerged up to here where If, that was, if the water was above the top of the plates, then all of the electricity is going to pass. The amperage is going to force it across the shortest distance, so it's going to be more concentrated along these narrow pieces of, or these narrow strips of copper that I have here connecting to the main plate. So if the water level is above touching these strips, then all of the amperage is going to pass across uh, these strips here. So all the electrolysis, all of the um, electroplating, and the discharging of metal is going to take place between these two strips, which we don't want. We want it to take place down on these larger flat surfaces so it can go at a slower rate and uh, strip off more amounts of smaller particles from the big plates. So that's why you don't want the water level too high. We're going to be creating not only colloidal copper by having this uh, suspended in water, so there's going to be copper particles left in the water. We're also doing electrolysis here, so you're producing a small amount of hydrogen gas on the uh, cathode, the negative, and you're also producing oxygen on the anode, or the positive. So there's electrolysis taking place. We've got colloidal metal, metal being produced. Um, there's also galvanic plating happening here. Uh, the metal from the positive plates being deposited onto the negative plate. The cathode so from the anode to the cathode that's how they uh, chrome chrome things for your truck that's how they um, plate say uh, silver or gold plated jewelry it's all done with electrolysis or uh, a similar process to this this is also how they produce hydrogen and oxygen uh, commercially at a commercial scale for the most part um, Large-scale hydrogen production is actually also done with burning natural gas on a hot, hot M or a piece of steel. So it's not only done with this, but this is one of the ways to do it. So because of the galvanic uh, plating that happens, basically all the metal wants to be deposited onto the cathode or the negative. Uh, we want to use polarity flopping. So we want to have the polarity of these two. Um, uh, plates switch every 10 seconds or so so the positive becomes a negative negative becomes the positive and In order to do that. I'll show you what I've got here. So we're going to turn this on. This is My three channel. These are just basic DC power supplies that I bought from uh, The internet. I think I got them from eBay or uh, Alibaba Hopefully you guys can see that and Inside here we have, these are um, timers which switch the polarity. So I've got the positive and the negative being flopped between them about every 10 seconds. And I'm just gonna put that down and then Grab the camera here so I can show you guys this properly here. So those are the timers and they are what is causing the polarity to switch from the anode to the cathode and the cathode to the anode. And then I've got my DC power supply uh, converter so that's what's taking the wall power and converting it to DC. Um, I'm running at, I think this one's 50, 50 volts. Yeah, this is a 50 volt unit, so uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, just the ability to step down the voltage, change it from AC to DC, and then these are the uh, power supply outputs here. So you can see I can turn it on, we've got 50, 50 volts, and it'll tell me the watts and the amps, and I can adjust them in current and voltage limit it. So that's the unit I'm using to power the plates that we have here. And I've got distilled water in here, and you can see that the water doesn't come above uh, the top of the plates, and we want to prevent the water from being above the top of the plates because if it was up here on these two power strips coming down, 
then all of the uh, electrolysis and galvanic plating and on colloidal making would take place up here between these two strips which we don't want that would result in higher amperages and larger particles we want it to take place down here oh I gotta get rid of my cat because oh hang on we have a kitty here trying to help us with the science Thank you for your help, Kitty. So, I'm gonna plug these in. And get the process started here. So we're at one, we're at 30 milliamps to start. And it's limited at, uh, um, 100 milliamps, so 0.1 amp is the max that we're gonna go. And I will show you guys what that looks like. I'm just going to turn on the air stones here. Okay. So you can see we've got the electrolysis happening here. So right now there's electricity flowing in between these two plates and it's creating a loop of electrons and pieces of metal being deposited from the positive plate to the negative plate and the polarity flopping is switching the polarity of the plates every 10 seconds so that there isn't a huge buildup of uh, metal on the negative plate if it wasn't flopped. It makes everything nice and even and then the bubbling just allows for uh, everything to be broken up as it's produced so you don't get any big chunks of metal and it uh, creates a more stable end product. Now, I just want to show you the color. Color of our final solution is uh, turquoise green. And now I'm going to pour it back into these uh, containers to take up to the garden. Oh, and I just want to show you that the PPM has gone from zero distilled PPM. So it was zero PPM when we started with the distilled water. And now we've got a solution of about seven to 10 PPM. I don't know if I trust that meter hundred percent. So try this one here. Yeah, this one's saying 12. I don't know if I trust either of them, but it's not important for this test because anywhere from uh, 5 to 20 ppm is perfect. So that's our colloidal, colloidal copper solution. And we are going to get this cleaned up and into the containers and then take it up to the garden and I'll show you uh, which plants we're going, which sections we're going to pour it on and see the results. I'm going to do several different feedings over the coming months so we'll see if we can get some increased growth rates from the plants we put it on. Natural organic fertilizer. Thank you for watching.